Hi, this is Carmen on the tube. Carm 3D on the tube. And uh, this video is going to be about polyflow. Don't know if you've heard that term before, but I think after watching this you'll get a good idea what it's all about. This can apply to any kind of uh, subdivided object, whether it's this funky thing you're looking at here or, you know, organic shapes and sizes. So, let's get to it. You can see here, I have a sort of like a, a greenhouse type of shape here with a, a chimney extrusion thing going on up at the top. And, uh, you know, it's pretty rough, quick and dirty. Let's see what happens when I hit the tab key. Obviously it gets smoother, but let me take these wires off and if you look closer you will see that it's not super clean it could be better and uh, if you were to render this it wouldn't be horrible I'll be honest with you but there is room for improvement so basically this is a way to you know, if you were doing something that demanded the most perfect looking model possible, this is what you would employ. You might not want to use this, you know, in every effort, but uh, now you will be armed with the knowledge about this, so let's get to it. The problem with this is that the flow of these loops of polygons are not uniform. So you get one here and one goes in this direction. You got this one right here. It just ends abruptly. And when this ends abruptly on a curve like this, when things are changing directions, you get these artifacts that we're looking at here. Now technically let me put my wires back on. Technically these when, when you got five lines going into one point does not render this bad. Okay, It looks bad here in OpenGL but when it renders it's not quite so bad. But there is still room for improvement. If you have, uh, by the way, if you do have six lines going into a point then you will definitely get artifacts when you render the image out. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm digressing, so let's move on. Let's see, there's a number of ways I could do this. I think what I may do is delete all the polygons, polygons? Polygons surrounding this tube. Delete. Well, I'll just cut them and put them next layer. Okay. Now I'm going to select this edge loop. And uh, I'm going to go into another view here. And extrude. Actually, I'll just hit the E key and then scale it. Okay. So let me stop here and hit the tab key again. And as you can see, this is really quite clean, going all the way around. Of course, the problem is, this new addition does not flow into the structure that we want it to go into. And uh, there's, uh, to my knowledge, there's no easy way to do that. You just basically move the stuff around until it's pleasing to your eye. Now, as you'll notice, the silhouette of the, let me move this back up, the original structure here, from here to here, here to here, etc. This is implied when you hit the tab key, it rounds out. So, if you use your imagination, like, uh, imagine a curve going through these junctures, then you would want this line 
to be maybe right here. I'm just tracing it as if they're connecting to where that curve will be when they subdivide. Same thing here. And like that. So we're getting closer. Let me go back to my perspective view. And let's see, I think I'll just uh, add some polygons now. Put my wires back on. This may require ripping some things up and redoing things a few times to get it just right, but for right now I'll just fill up these holes and we'll deal with that later. Okay, I got a five point polygon here, so that's not going to fly, but it's just for now. And I'm just matching them. Matching hole A with edge B, and uh, there is a differing number of polygons for each one, so it's expected you're going to get some five pointers, some three pointers here and there. We'll just worry about that later. Okay.